The Invisible Man, Episode 3. I left the burning house, full of a sense of power and freedom, and I made the most of it. <laughs> I had fun with all those fools who would never understand the miracle I had created. I flung some people's hats, clapped somebody's back, made horrifying sounds. Um, oh. Who's, who's there? Ghost! There's a ghost here! <laughs> and then one day a man carrying a crate of soda dashed against me. The poor fool was so shocked that I laughed. And of course, that scared the chap even more. And then I took a few models and smashed them around him. Oh, it was fun. I felt invincible. Someone who could play with people around because I was invisible. You could have hurt him badly. Nonsense. I was just enjoying what my brilliant mind had created. But yes, it didn't last very long. Firstly, a dog came running towards me. Dogs can perceive the scent of a moving man even if the man is invisible. And then a few urchins noticed footsteps on the street. I had to get away from there. Anyways, it was early January and the freezing roads were hurting my feet. I needed clothing, I needed shelter, and I needed food. Desperately. So I had the perfect idea. I went to the Omnium's departmental store that night just as it was closing. I got vests and a coat and a hat, socks and shoes. In the refreshment area, there was hot coffee and cold meat. And then I slept on the cozy mattresses in the warm blankets, as comfortable as a man could be. The magic of invisibility. I could go wherever I wanted and take whatever I wanted. <sighs> or so I thought. The next morning, the store opened, and I tried to sneak out of bed, but the man at the store saw me. Who's there? Stop! The fool alerted everyone and came running towards me. I flung a chair at him and ran into the pottery section. I had nothing but the pots to use as weapons. I threw them at those nincompoops and rushed into the bedstead storeroom. There, I removed my clothing so that I became invisible again. Ugh! It was troublesome. I had no clothes, no shoes, and socks in that biting January cold. Ugh! I realized invisibility was not easy. Dogs could make me out, rain would create a watery outline of me, and so would snow, wet soil, or dirt would expose my footsteps and whereabouts. I couldn't eat, for any food yet unassimilated would make me look grotesque. So, what did you do next? I remembered that there were many theatrical shops in the area. I got into one of them. It was tough, for the owner of that shop had diabolically keen hearing. He heard my movements across the various rooms of that shop. He even brought a gun to shoot, so I had to assault him. I attacked him with a lamppost and tied him up in a sheet so that I could find what I needed in peace. That fool deserved it. Deserved it? Griffin, you were the one trespassing into his home, and you meant to rob. Can't you see? It had to be done. I found clothes, a fake nose, a mask, a wig, and dark glasses. All of these made me look grotesque, but credible enough as an alive human being. His cash box and cover had about eight shilling and eight pounds. Finally, finally, I was equipped to step out into the world. Oh, I was mad with the desire to eat delicious, scrumptious food, but I couldn't eat at a good restaurant, for then everyone would see that my face was invisible, and the unassimilated food traveling in my mouth and throat would look terribly abnormal and gross. So I went to a lowly place with a private room. I told them that I was disfigured, badly. I ate, but I realized the uselessness of what I had done. Invisibility could make me get everything I wanted, but it would not allow me to enjoy anything I got. I had to find a way to reverse what I had done, to become visible and invisible as I choose. And camp, that is possible. I figured it out. It is all there. Such miracles in those three diaries that that tramp Marvel had stolen from me along with all my money. All your stolen money? Look, I need a partner. It was foolish of me to work alone on this. But now I want you to help me. I need money, food, a place to work, and a place to rest. I need my books back. Could you get them from that fool? 
that tramp Marvel? That man is in the police station. He requested to be kept there so that he could be protected from you. Griffin, just publish your work. And get what? The tag of one of the most useless discoveries of the world? Being invisible has been so frustrating. And I want to make it count. We can still make it count, Kemp. There are things, wonderful things, that can still be done with the power of invisibility. You and I, together. We can do it, all of them, together. What things, Griffin? Invisibility is very useful in approaching, stealing, and escaping. I can walk around any man holding any weapon and strike at will. Invisibility is therefore very, very useful in killing. Invisibility can make a man invincible. Establish terror and dominance over the world. Your town, Burdock, must be ruled by the Invisible Man. The man who can shoot orders and kill those who dare disobey him. A reign of terror which can be brought about only by the Invisible Man. Who's that? Traitor! You told me nobody I knew I was here! Colonel Adya, the cop who Dr. Kent had written to, had come to Dr. Kemp's house. He was shocked to see Dr. Kemp being forced down the steps by a seemingly invisible force. Then Dr. Kemp was made to fall down the steps and an unseen foot stamped on the colonel's. The door was flung open and someone shot out. Dr. Kemp, Dr. Kemp, are you all right? Yeah, yes, quite, but w we must stop him. We must stop him, Colonel. Stop who? Tell us what you know. <sighs> the Invisible Man, he is selfish, very, very volatile, and will not think twice before hurting anyone to protect himself and get whatever he wants. We must stop him. But how? He is invisible. Tell everyone to keep their houses locked. Make sure no food is accessible to him. Lock it all up, hide it away, and get dogs. They can't see him, but they can perceive him, smell him, and remember that unassimilated food shows on him. He needs to hide after eating, so keep poking every thicket, every place that he could possibly hide. Put powdered glass on the roads. It is mean, but he wants to unleash a reign of terror, a reign of terror he's thinking of killing everyone. We will do as you say. I shall get everyone in the department on this right away. Cops went all over town, warning people to stay indoors and keep all doors locked. Schools left early and all children were asked to keep together in safe groups. Powdered glass was poured over the roads and all shops. Department stores were shut. The invisible man must have been very angry, for that evening, in a fit of rage, he attacked Mr. Wicksteed, the butler of Lord Burdock. He got irritated when Mr. Wicksteed followed a stick seemingly floating in the air a little distance away from him. The invisible man was in no mood for such unwanted curiosity. The next morning, Dr. Kemp received a letter. Kemp, you have been very clever. You did your best to make it near impossible for me to get food or rest. But I have got both and now I begin the reign of terror. It starts today. It starts with a man called Kemp. Tell the authorities that Dr. Kemp will be executed today. Tell the authorities that from today, this town belongs to the Invisible Man. Let them all do whatever they can to save you, but they will not succeed. I must tell Colonel Ajay about this. Take this to Colonel Ajay right away and make sure you fasten all the doors and windows of the house. A little while later, there was a knock. It was Colonel Ajay. Your servant was attacked and a letter was snatched from her. What happened? The Invisible Man? Dr. Kemp showed Colonel Ajay the letter. I shall go to the police station and get the hounds. Dr. Kemp waited. For a while, there was no sound. And suddenly, there were sounds. Violent sounds. <laughs> The Invisible Man was now trying to get into Dr. Kim's house. Sounds of crashing windows and breaking doors were heard until an axe came flying into the house. Dr. Kemp ran, ran to save his life. He was clever. He ran towards the town of Burdock, and on his way, whenever he found a rough path full of flint, stones, or gravel, he ran over it, knowing that such a path 
would be extremely difficult for the invisible man to run over with his bare feet. Presently, he reached the town and shouted out on the streets. The invisible man! He's after me! The invisible man! People heard Dr. Kemp and brought out sticks to attack the invisible man. The invisible man tried to attack Dr. Kemp, but Dr. Kemp caught him instead. I have him! I have him! Everyone, hold him down! Hold him down! But the crowd was angry. They were angry at the man who had thieved, hurt, and injured and scared so many people over the past few months. Stop! Stop! You don't need to hurt him! The police are here now! Let them come through! Make way! Make way! Policemen caught him, and then suddenly, a strange change started coming over the invisible body. Bone, muscle, nerves, and skin. Griffin became visible. He was not wearing any clothes to stay invisible, so maybe the cold got him, or maybe the formula itself was somehow poisonous. Whatever it was, the no longer invisible man was dead. A man who's the greatest physicist in the world. He should have been admired and loved. Instead, people hated him, if only. <sighs> the three books that Griffin had wanted so badly were with that tramp Marvel, who is now the owner of an inn. The Invisible Man. The police could not make out which money belonged to whom, so they gave all the money to me. I was with the Invisible Man for so many days. Marvel never mentioned the three books to anyone. They were safely hidden away, for he harbored a dream to unravel its secrets and Marvel's someday. And this was the sad, sad story of the Invisible Man. The physicist Griffin had a brilliant mind, but he lacked a compassionate heart. And that is why, instead of finding ways to use his marvelous discovery to help people, he chose to hurt with it. And that is the crux of life. Nothing, no accomplishment, no success is success if it is selfish, if it does not promote kindness, love, and happiness for as many people as possible. Such an accomplishment will only bring disaster. <laughs>